Hello and welcome to the Hooniverse. Today I'm going to talk about a device that everyone who has watched Doctor Who has dreamt of owning, building, or even creating. This can function as a sonic blaster, a sonic cannon, Mommy. and a triple enfolded sonic disruptor. Doc, what you got? Uh, I've got a sonic cannon. Oh, never mind. What? It's sonic. Okay, let's leave it at that. Disruptor, cannon, what? It's sonic. Totally sonic. I am sonic. To all. A sonic what? Screwdriver! Yes, a sonic screwdriver. So, how does it work? While the sonic can be used as a screwdriver, it can disable weaponry, and even vaporize a door. But it can also manipulate objects at a distance, which is what I will be focusing on today. So can you manipulate objects with sound? Well actually yes, as shown in a video detailing acoustic levitation. The droplets you can see are not very big or heavy, but they are in fact floating on sound. Here's how it works. Sound is basically a pressure wave which hits your ears. You can take advantage of these pressure waves to suspend an object that isn't too large. If you direct the waves towards the object at the right distances, you can get a particle to ping pong between the areas of high pressure and the areas of low pressure, creating what's called a standing wave, known as a node. Floating particles are cool, but what if you want to manipulate objects in space? Well, at the University of Tokyo, there is a mid-air, three-dimensional acoustic levitation device. This device works the same way as the device from the last clip, but it can manipulate the nodes in real time and three dimensions, which makes it better. Unfortunately, neither of these methods enable a screwdriver to operate with sound waves. For that, we would need a different kind of sound. Yeah, the... No, not that sound. If you do want to actually twist an object in space using sound waves alone, we would need sound waves that look not like this, but like this. These helix shaped DNA like sound waves within part rotational momentum instead of just linear momentum. This is in fact where research into ultrasonics is heading, with Bruce Drinkwater, professor of ultrasonics at the University of Bristol, is probably closer than anyone in the world than making a real life sonic screwdriver. Here is a video he and his team shot. It shows everyday plain flower spinning in an acoustic vortex. It's spinning thanks to a number of tiny ultrasonic speakers arranged in a circle. Granted that flower particles aren't very big, it's about one tenth of a human hair. However, Professor Drinkwater thinks we have the technology right now to make what he calls a watchmaker's sonic screwdriver, able to manipulate the tiniest of screws. So, what we humans have right now is nothing compared to what a Gallifrey might have, but it does have potential. The best explanation for how the sonic screwdriver works is the use of ultrasonic waves that manipulate particles using waves that are helix shaped and rotate. However, this still leaves many questions, as yes, the science we have at the moment may allow us the turning of screws, the same as how the second doctor introduced the sonic screwdriver. Look, I can prove to you that we come from another time. This is a sonic screwdriver. Now, where can I demonstrate that? Ah, that revolver will do. It's all right. There we are. And back it goes. Fantastic! But how does it open locks? And cut rope. Well, I've looked through many sciencey websites and books, but there's one book that I haven't consulted, which is the Doctor Who Visual Dictionary. Now it is only last week I went back through my Doctor Who book collection that I started rereading. The Visual Dictionary, which has its own dedicated sonic screwdriver page, which details a diagram of the sonic screwdriver, as shown here with primary emitter clusters and cooling cells. How does that help? Well, it doesn't really. What does help are the quotes inside the book which say the following. High kinetic sound waves can open all kinds of locks. Now, high kinetic sound waves follow the theory of acoustic levitation by building up kinetic energy inside the helix shaped sound wave and using it to move the tumblers inside the lock. This process can be reversed to lock the door by moving the tumblers in the opposite direction. So, the sonic screwdriver uses sonic waves to move stuff, but how does it cut rope? Well, I quote again from the Doctor Who Visual Dictionary. The beam from a sonic screwdriver can interact at a molecular level with another object, for example by cutting a rope by unravelling the individual fibres at a specific point. 
Can sound waves unravel fibres? Technically no. What they can do is move molecules. Science we have today, moving the molecules in a specific pattern or using two opposing waves, would be a starting point for cutting the rope. So, from books, websites, magazines and the TV show, that's my theory on how the sonic screwdriver works. Do you have a better one? Please put it in the comments below. Or do you think it's just what tiny, whiny, wibbly wobbly stuff that makes the sonic screwdriver works? Either way, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.